Welcome to whiskey.com, where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning, and I'm the master taster of whiskey.com. Today we have a special Irish whiskey here on my cask. It's a teeling, single grain, 46% ABV, unchill filtered. Teeling, never heard of that. Um, the family teeling uh, founded their first distillery in Dublin in 1782 and they were famous for producing whiskey in Ireland. Uh, the Irish whiskey had a, a hard time over the centuries. And in, 19, in the 1960s, most of the distilleries, over a thousand, were dead, bankrupt, finished, ended production. The problem has been uh, the fight for independence from Great Britain in 1920, 1921, the prohibition from the US, the biggest export market for Irish whiskey, and then with the rebellion against the English and Scots um, and Welsh, uh, they lost uh, the Commonwealth membership. So there were uh, duties to pay to export on foreign markets. So they had a hard time. Everything went dead. And uh, there were only two distilleries left in Cork and in the north, the Bushmills distillery. And then in 1988 or 89, I think, the Cooley distillery uh, was brought to production and this has been a plant for pharmaceutical alcohol production. So from potatoes or whatever. And the family Teeling converted this alcohol plant into a whiskey distillery and they had those column stills for producing grain whiskey and they added uh, pot stills for the production of malt whiskey. And so the Cooley distillery in the very northern part of the Republic of Ireland, in the northeast, close to the border to uh, North Ireland, uh, this was the first built distillery in Ireland for decades. Um, the family of Teeling tried to convert their company into uh, uh, a public owned company. They want to issue shares, their IPO. Uh, but in the year 2008, 2009, the financial crisis uh, uh, interrupted this effort. And so they tried how can we uh, uh, sell this business? And Jim Beam, the big Jim Beam from the US, bought uh, the Cooley Distillery in, I think it was 2012. And Jim Beam was then bought 2014 or 13, late 13, uh, by Suntory from Japan. Um, so <laughs> Jim Beam wasn't uh, uh, the chief or, or the uh, the driving force behind Cooley for a long time. No, for only several years. Um, but the family of Teeling uh, reserved several casks from the distillery for their own purposes. And now in 2013, they started with the first uh, bottling uh, rum, rum cask finished. Uh, and today we have this single grain uh, bottle here on my cask. Um, uh, well, it's a limited edition. It's only limited to, I think, a thousand bottles. And uh, it was matured in oak cask and then later on finished in uh, wine cask. And I think those casks were California Cabernet Sauvignon red wine, red wine casks. So, long enough for the background of this bottle. So there are no or any independent bottlers 
in Ireland so far, there had been a few casks moving over to Scotland for the bottling as independent casks, but really not many. Um, so this one is the first which comes close to an independent bottling in Ireland. There are only two other, no, three, in the meantime three, and the fourth distillery is uh, close to uh, to production, the Tullamore, there's the old Kilbegan distillery. Um, I have a, a movie of the visit of the old distillery in Cork, in Middleton, here, uh, and I have a, a video from the old Kilbegan distillery, very, very old, this distillery, uh, here. <laughs> I'm not quite sure if I have translated the text already in English. Let's see. very light and an alcoholic note. So green whiskey is most often a very light whiskey. The power, the spiciness of the malt isn't there. Together with a light vanilla from the cask and some spiciness appearing but faint. There's a fruitiness of, of grapes and reminds me a little bit of cognac and I'm afraid <laughs> I'm no friend of cognac. Very, very light on the tongue, and then bitterness appearing. Mm. I think the the first casks for the maturation of the whiskey were quite old and refill casks, so it was less vanilla, less coconut from the casks, but but more of tannins, more of oakiness, more of bitterness. The aftertaste is not too long. The bitterness resides on the tongue, stays there really, and it's a. There's a big difference between the light and weak aroma and the strong oak wood taste. I would say it's not so well balanced, no. So whenever you're keen on on Irish whiskies and you perhaps have a collection, you should go for this bottle, of course. Uh, otherwise, I would ex uh, I would prefer uh, the other teeling whisky, the rum finish. I'm also not a friend of rum, I'm afraid, uh, but uh, this whisky was, from my personal taste, more pleasant. Thank you for watching whiskey.com. There's more to come. Stay tuned. Uh, discuss this whiskey with me on our newly opened forum and share this video with your friends.